Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We love being encouraged to live out our faith in Jesus by hearing the stories of women in our church community. We are so glad that you're here. Christina Sandra gives us a glimpse inside her wrestling with God and seeing Him answer. We invite you to be challenged and encouraged by her story and see the fruit God produced in her life. We know her story of infertility does not reflect all stories of infertility. Each journey is unique. We hope, though, regardless of what your life looks like, her story will motivate you to have honest conversations with our compassionate God. Hi, and welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. I'm Camille, and today I have Christina Sandra with me, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been looking forward to having Christina back on the podcast for a long time, and she is, I don't know if you guys know this, but she is a busy lady. I and have been quite busy. Yes. Yeah. She just, I'm not busy right now. Well, I mean. <laughs> but I was very busy. Were, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was very busy because she was finishing her um, degree, Yeah. and now she's done. I'm done. You've defended, you presented. Yeah, I had an oral defense and I walked the stage mm. and it was a lot of fun. I'm so excited for you. Thanks. That's a lot of work. Um, so Christina's here to talk about wrestling with the Lord. Yeah. Um, but before we dive in, I'm going to ask her the question we ask everybody. And that is, what is a small thing that's brought you joy recently? Okay, so um, a while ago in Burleson where we live, they opened this new drink shop called Swig. Oh. And apparently it's a drink shop that's all over, but they just opened one for us. And they make these like sodas where they put in flavors. Ooh. But my favorite is a sparkling water. And then you put in like syrups and fresh fruit and stuff like that. But I was spending oh. a lot of money there. <laughs> and so my husband told me I couldn't spend that much money there anymore. So I bought all the stuff and started making them at home. <gasps> I know, and so it's really much more cost effective. Sure. So you just buy a bunch of club soda and then like syrup off Amazon, like sugar free oh cherry or whatever, and then frozen fruit. And it's like my new favorite thing. I drink it all day. Oh, that might change. And it's my water ish. Oh my goodness. Water ish. ish. <laughs> so I'm like, t- I tell myself it's healthy because it's clear, like water. Yes. But it has like a fizz to it and then like a fruity <laughs> kick. And it's been so fun. I like that. It's healthy because it's clear, like water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it is though. It's in club soda it's, water. Yeah. It's just carbonated water. Yes. Right? I, have been telling myself I should do the research and see how water and club mm. soda like line up, but I yeah. haven't done that. Yet. Leave that for yeah. after summertime, like yeah, in I the agree. depths of winter when I'm not thinking about so, it. That's a small bit of joy in my life lately. That sounds so great. I love that. Um, well, today, like I said, we're talking about wrestling with the Lord. Um, and I'm so excited because that's not something I've really thought about. Maybe, <laughs> listener, you have thought about it, but um, it wasn't something that I was expecting. Um, but my impression is that you don't just all of a sudden begin wrestling with right. God. Like it's not something you just jump into. So Christina, can you tell us a little bit about where that wrestling started or what yeah. prompt you to wrestle with the Lord? Yeah. So um, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to this have heard me talk about my infertility before. Um, I remember when I was in the middle of my infertility telling the Lord, if you don't use this, like what's the point? And so mm-hmm. I've tried to make an effort to talk about it as much as possible because it's one of those things in my life where really God gets the glory for anything that has happened, any growth that has happened in there. And I feel like so many women do struggle with infertility and we just don't really talk about it enough. So if you have heard me talk about this, forgive me, but that's really where it started for me. Mm -hmm. So after my first child, um, she's seven now, she was born in 2016. Mm -hmm. So after her, we had a really hard time for about three years getting pregnant, actually a lot longer because we're still not pregnant, but that's... We're getting there. Yeah. But we couldn't have any more children, and no one really had an answer why. There was just everything looked good, and everything looked like it's operating as it should, Um, but it wasn't happening. And uh, we would get pregnant, and then we would miscarry, and then we'd get pregnant, and then we'd miscarry. So um, it was just no one could figure out really what was going on. Um, So for about three years, That was on repeat, pregnant, miscarry, pregnant, miscarry. And then there was a year in there of lots of surgeries and procedures trying to like 
figure out what was going on and then specialists. And I was not in a good place. Yeah. And um, I was here working at Christ Chapel and um, I, I was in this, for a lot of it, in this role, a minister to women, like I was ministering to other women while I was really in a hard season. Mm -hmm. And for several years, I, for three years, I remember I would have a quiet time with the Lord and I would say the things that I thought I was supposed to say. Thank you that I have one kid. I should be grateful. Mm -hmm. You've blessed me with so many things. Um, and then I would close my Bible, close my journal, get up, and this anger and bitterness and grief and all those emotions would bubble up, and yeah. then they would really be what like I felt all day long. And then the next day I would wake up and I'd have a quiet time and I'd go back to telling God what I thought I was supposed to say to him. Mm. I'm so thankful for all the things you've given me and I know I shouldn't complain. And then I would close my Bible and my journal and uh, all those things that I thought I was hiding from the Lord would come back up. And um, for several years, like I was so emotionally unstable. I really couldn't have healthy relationships with anyone. Lots of my relationships with my girlfriends changed. Mm. Um, I was fragile constantly. I would break and in, like, burst into tears if I saw a pregnant woman. And yeah. before that season, I remember thinking like, Honestly, it's pr it was my pride just being like, I'm not a jealous person. Mm. I don't struggle with those things um, and so many other issues. And then through this season, I would notice these things in myself mm -hmm. that I used to really be judgmental about before. Um, and just thinking to myself, like, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. How am I now the person like uh, on the other side of things? Mm -hmm. um, so... It was several really, really hard years. And then at the beginning of 2020, I was reading the book of Job mm. and I was listening to a podcast that went along with it. And they said that in the book of Job, um, Job models for us how we're supposed to walk through suffering and how we do that is through prayer. And I was like, what? It was just like a revelation. And, and the guy was saying, what you see is all Job's friends come and chat and they tell them what they think and they try to figure out why all this stuff is happening and how to make it stop happening and all this stuff. And then at the end, Job's like, okay, y'all get lost. And he goes directly mm -hmm. to God. And he really is quite honest with God. And he it pours out mm -hmm. his heart and his agony. And then God responds. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like... It was just so crazy to me. And I'd read Job so many times. And I had been thinking for those several years, like, where are you, God? Mm. I'm showing up. Like, I'm here having quiet times. Where are you? Right. And in, at the same time I'm reading Job and I'm learning this, I kept feeling like God was saying, oh, oh I'm here. You're not. Right. You're just going through the motions. Like, right. you're showing up. Great. You're reading your Bible. Awesome. But mm -hmm. you're not actually here. I'm getting a very fake version of Christina. Yeah. Because you're just telling him the things that you think you're supposed yes. to say. Yes. And then thinking like I'm hiding mm. my real emotions away from him where he can't see. Right. And so when you look at Job, he like puts it all out there, right? Yeah. And then God answers back and then Job talks back. And so they have this dialogue. Mm. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. Oh, that is, that's a little intimidating <laughs> yeah. to like, yeah. to go from saying like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be great. And yes, there's a place for gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah. But like to go from that model of like the way you've known to interact right. with the Lord to like, oh, he like his presence is legit yes. right here with me. And he's listening to the things yes. I'm saying. Yes. And, and he also sees the other stuff. Yes. That I'm not bringing into that 30 minute quiet time or whatever it right. is. Just because I'm not bringing it into that time, it doesn't mean that he's not seeing it. Right. So I started and I remember vividly writing in my journal I'm angry mm -hmm. and I'm sad. Mm. Why? And like writing these things down that I'd been feeling but didn't think it was appropriate to bring to the Lord. Like, right. I didn't think I could ask why. Mm -hmm. I was, I've been taught just have faith and trust God. And I did, and I do, right. but it doesn't mean I can't 
be very honest with the God of the universe and my father. Yes. And so it was a big shift for me. And I remember thinking um, I would put my daughter to bed and then my husband would go to bed and I would come out of the bedroom and go sit on my couch and I'd grab my Bible and I'd grab my journal and I would have this image of like God, just like giant, like a huge God, gigantic. Mm -hmm. And I would crawl up into his lap and I would kind of sit in the nook of his elbow and Mm. like beat on his chest. Yeah. And just say, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, And sometimes he'd answer, you know, in his word and sometimes he wouldn't. And, but every time I felt that he was there. Yeah. And so for three years I was showing up, Mm. supposedly showing up, but I felt like I was getting nothing. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally became honest and said like, this is really hard. Mm -hmm. Why do you let me get pregnant and then take the baby? Just don't let me get pregnant. Right. Why does it have to be this way? Mm -hmm. Um, it was really then that I felt like there was a breakthrough. Mm. And so for 2020, many of you will remember that year was quite a challenging year. Yeah. I was home a lot. Yeah. And that was kind of the year where everything started shifting. I had read Job in January. Mm-hmm. And so during that time at home, I just had a ton of time to be with the Lord. And it was night after night of this um uh, kind of like pulling out these emotions in me that I thought I couldn't have or shouldn't have and laying them before God. Mm. And eventually I kind of got to a spot where I said, all right, Lord, if this isn't your will, okay, I don't like it, but Mm. I want to be in your will because I know that's the best place for me. Mm -hmm. So either I need you to give me a child Mm -hmm. or take this desire away from me. That's a huge ask. (laughs) Like that's a bold thing to ask the Lord. Yeah, I just like couldn't continue. Yeah. And I had started being so honest with him that I felt like it was almost like I had relational equity kind of, you know, I felt like, okay, I've been very honest with you Mm -hmm. and you are meeting me, right? Like you are showing up. I am feeling different. Yeah. I'm feeling lighter. The grief didn't go away. Mm -hmm. The sadness didn't go away, the confusion, but I felt lighter, like I didn't have to carry it all by myself. Yeah. That was the first time I really started wrestling with him. Mm. So through 2020, I start, 2020 into 21, I started noticing a change in me. Mm. And um, it started, I remember the first time a friend of mine had a baby and she brought the baby over and asked if I wanted to hold the baby. And I, in my head, was like, no. <laughs> and then I thought, well, that was a weird thought. Yeah. Why wouldn't I want to hold her baby? Mm-hmm. And so I just ignored it and kept going. And then a few weeks later, it happened again. Same kind of situation with a baby. And someone asked me to hold it. And I was like, oh, I'm okay. And then I thought, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Who? What's going on? Yeah. And it continued and it continued. And then I remembered that I had told the Lord to either give me a child or take the desire away from me. Yeah. And... Um, I, throughout that year, throughout 2020, it was like, just, it was kind of this compounding thing where all of a sudden I would wake up and be like, I don't think I want any more kids. Wow. I I don't think I want any more. So I had a conversation with my husband one day and I said, babe, I think we're done. And he said, I don't think we are. Oh goodness. And I was like, oh, Oh, you're not the one who's been miscarrying. Okay. Okay. That's okay. That's unfair. You know, I, in my brain, I thought like, it should be my decision, mm-hmm. but that's not right. And so um, I had become so convinced that God's plan was for us to stop trying mm-hmm. that I said to him, you know what? I'll wait. Yeah. And so then a couple months go by. We go on a trip with some friends of ours. It's our family with our one child, another family with four, and another family with three mm-hmm. children. And at the end of that trip, Jared, my husband, said, I think we're done. Wow. And I said, okay, Great. we're done. Yeah. Yeah. And I look back on the last several years and I see why we we are one child family. Mm-hmm. I see it. I see why God designed my family unit to look like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking in those years of infertility, I will never thank God for this. I will never be in a place where I can say thank you for this. And Camille... I kid you not, probably weekly, I find myself telling the Lord, 
thank you for knowing better and not giving me a kid when I begged you for one. That is amazing. Yeah. And I read somewhere like, God, it's so hard for him to watch his children hurt and not relent. Mm -hmm. So while he watches you hurt, like really deep hurt, he can easily relent and stop that hurt. But because he knows what's better, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that has been such a paradigm shift for me that like, God, thank you for watching me suffer because it must have been really hard for you because you love me a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you ha- you listened to me and for years you showed up and you wrestled with me and you were so kind to wrestle with me mm-hmm. and you let me say things like, give me a child or take this desire. And now I stand on this side of things going, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's when I think about the idea of like a father watching his child mm-hmm. suffer, mm-hmm. like, I'm drawn automatically to to Jesus, yeah, of course. Yeah. But even when you think about Job, like how much Job, like, I mean, really suffered. And yes. not that you haven't. That's not what I no. intend to mean by that. Of but course. when I think about how like God was so patient and waiting for Job to hear from yeah. everybody else yeah. and to like go back and forth and to have to watch somebody that you like you love dearly more than I can even fathom. Right. To watch him go through all of that just to get to the point where he can finally meet with you and dialogue with you and bring you to that point where, I mean, the relationship between the two of you is just so much stronger than it could have been if... yeah. Oh, it's just incredible. During all this, a friend said to me, you know, you think that you have like the full character of God. Like, you know everything. Mm -hmm. Like, think of God as like this pie and you know all the pieces. But what if you only know like an eighth because your life experience has only led you to experience God in an eighth of his character? Mm -hmm. She's like, what? There's so much more to him. So as you walk through the season of grief, ask him, who are you in my grief? Mm -hmm. What are your promises for me in my grief? And boy, does he answer and show up because he has so much to say to us and he has so much for us in different seasons. Mm -hmm. And as I walk through that season, I now stand on this side of it and I'm like, well, I wasn't very compassionate before, but my compassion runs pretty deep right now. You know, like I see my weaknesses from before and that season has made me a better mom. It has made me a better wife, a better friend, a better minister. It has formed me to be better in so many ways. Yeah, You told me this before, Christina, when we were meeting before to talk about this, and you were like, I am, I was not a compassionate person. <laughs> and you said it in such a way that I was like, I, like, I never would have thought that about you. Like, I would never have felt like, oh, that Christina, she is so incompassionate. Yeah. But I mean, I find it hard to believe because now, right. like knowing you and seeing you and watching you interact with people, like that's a mark of who you are. And the Lord created that in me through my infertility. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of the things that he needed to cultivate in me. And I'm not saying that's the only reason that I suffered through that. That's not what I'm saying. But I think it's one of the fruit that I have seen come out of that. Mm -hmm. Another one is that I can talk to people about it. I can talk to women about it. And I understand because I've experienced a lot of different ways Mm -hmm. of miscarriage and a lot of different types of infertility issues. And so, you know, I, sometimes I look back and I'm like, okay, Lord, did you let those things happen over and over and over and over? So that when someone talks to me about their specific experience, I had one like that. Yeah. And I can connect more on a different level. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think about when people, when me or other somebody else is in the midst of suffering and we ask, we finally get to that point where we can ask the hard question of the Lord, like, why? Mm. Why why now? Mm-hmm. Or why this person? Or why me? Like, what is your purpose in this, Lord? And like, I don't think most of us expect to hear an answer in all honesty, yeah. um, because the point really is just to get to the point of saying, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It's not within my understanding to know why. Um, but do you, this is a, you can feel free to not answer this question, but like, do you think in those moments when you were wrestling with the Lord, like God gave you an answer no. for why? No. no. I don't, I, I, I can guess on maybe why's today, like mm-hmm. the things we just talked about, but in it, no, I, he never 
wrote it on a wall or s- whispered it to my heart or said it through someone else, yeah. no. Um, but it was there was something about the freedom I had all of a sudden mm-hmm. to ask the question that drew me nearer to him, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And then all of a sudden, why does it matter? Yes. Right? Because yeah. I'm closer to the heart of God mm-hmm. because I've seen him in ways I'd never seen him before. So who cares why? Right. Give me more of you. Mm-hmm. Show me more of who you are. And that's the wrestling, right. you know, that this theme I feel like has been in my life for the last several years, this wrestling with God, this idea that something hits us, something happens. We're in a season that's hard. We have so many choices of what to do. Yeah. I've learned through spending three years not doing that before I started wrestling to wrestle first, mm. that God's like waiting, like, I'm here. Come, let's hang out and chat. Let Spend time with me. I might give you some really good insight. And yeah. if not, you'll know me more. Right. And isn't that the point, to know my heart more? Mm-hmm. So through that, learning to wrestle, you know the Lord more. Mm-hmm. And that then it, the other things don't matter. Yes. So I think about Jacob in the Bible. Mm-hmm. A very great example of someone who wrestled with God because he physically wrestled with God. And what you see before he wrestles is Jacob is kind of like a scumbag. Am I, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> You're allowed to say it. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> but the like, Bible is full of people who could be called scumbags. He's and like I conniving. Am also, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm pretty he's much like scumbag, manipulative. So. Yeah. He tricks people all the time. He's just like, you read him and you're like, why, dude? Mm-hmm. Why? Yep. And so he's that's who he is. Yeah. And he's about to meet his brother Esau for the first time in a long time. And he... Who he tricked. Who he tricked. tricked. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. And then he sends people ahead of him in trickery, essentially. He's like, he's, he's like the yeah. coward in the back. Yeah. So when he's alone, he wrestles with God. Mm. And God takes on like human form mm-hmm. to encounter Jacob. Oh and my goodness. Jacob isn't even like Chills. looking to encounter him, right? Yeah. So he like comes down. And I can just imagine God's like, dude, I'm about to change your life. Yeah. You know, wrestles with Jacob. Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. And then like God isn't the strongest in the entire universe. Jacob wins. Yes. But only because God lets him win Mm -hmm. and blesses him. And to me, it's this story that like, God wants to bless us, but the blessing comes in the struggle, in the wrestle. Yeah. So the blessing comes when I am like doing hard work with God, mm-hmm. when I am asking hard questions, and when I'm letting Him do hard work in my heart. Yeah. Right. So that means I'm sitting there going, what sin do I need to deal with, Lord, in this situation? Yeah. Oh, is that my pride? Is that my lack of compassion? I'm willing to do hard work with the Lord. Mm-hmm. We're wrestling. And then the story, the next story after... Jacob wrestles, I think it's the next one, is he encounters Esau. And he encounters Esau completely different, right? First, he has a physical limp. Mm. And second, he's like humble. Yes. He's a different guy. And so he marks, he he walks with a mark of a physical change, Mm -hmm. which I believe I have a physical change from who I was before my infertility and who I am after, Mm -hmm. how I speak to people, how I treat people, how I see people. Mm -hmm. And then he has an internal change. His heart is changed. And that is to me, the entire idea of wrestling with God. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to, in the seasons of hard stuff that have happened since the Lord has really like given, I wouldn't even say victory. The Lord has just changed my heart in terms of wanting to grow our family in hard seasons since then. And actually I've recently gone through a season that I would say was harder for me. Really? Oh yeah. Are, wow. I was gonna. Yeah. I was gonna ask the question like, oh well, how have you dealt? What dealt with wrestling <laughs> with the Lord since then? Thinking like, well, surely if you got through that wrestling of mm-hmm. like season of wrestling with the Lord, like everything else has got to be like a piece of cake. Yeah. But no, that's no. not the case. Okay. No, and I I've reflected on why, and I think it's because my infertility was between me and the Lord and my husband. He right. obviously, yeah. but it didn't really have other um, variables. Mm. But recently, I my family of origin has had some really t- terrible stuff happen. And those that had a lot of variables because yes. there was a lot of people involved. Right. And so that season was 
much harder mm. emotionally on me yeah. and mentally. And it was um, some, it, it just everything, my entire world shifted. Mm-hmm. Everything I knew to be like real about my family shifted. Wow. Everything that I had expected shifted. It actually it crumbled. It didn't, it just crumbled. Everything crumbled. Yeah. And um, I remember thinking, okay, I know how to wrestle. Oh, Christina. Okay. Oh. And telling God, thank you that you taught me how to wrestle in my infertility because this could take me down wow. if I didn't know how to wrestle. Mm-hmm. And so every, I, I, <laughs> I was going to spend this last year, 2020, in, I think I said it was the Old Testament, right? Yeah. yeah. In the Old mm-hmm. Testament. I was like, I'm going to spend this year in the Old Testament because... I didn't even know why. (laughs) And then like a few days in, I found myself in the Psalms, Mm. like jumping around. And I was like, yeah, the Psalms are good. I'm going to stay in the Psalms. Psalms The Psalms are good. Yeah. And so I just like picked a Psalm every morning and just spent a lot of time in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. And God knew that, boy, I was going to need the book of Psalm to get me through. Because I was going to have days with what was going on with my family where I was lamenting like David. And then they were going to have other days where I was asking God to rescue me. And then there would be those like random days where I'm rejoicing. And Mm -hmm. then there were times where I am telling God that I need Him alone. I'm counting on His Word. And so the Lord, so kind, took me out of what I thought I was going to be doing for the year and put me in the scriptures that he needed me to be in. Mm -hmm. And this thing with my family and I do, I, it, it was harder than my infertility, but I was healthier than I had ever been because Mm. I was in the word because I knew if I don't spend time in the word this morning, I'm going to get taken down. Yes. And so I'm like, I cannot function. I do not know what's coming every day. Yeah. When every time my phone rings, I'd want to throw up. Like I can't do those things if I'm not rooted in wrestling with the Lord. And so mm-hmm. I wrestled every morning with him. Yeah. Why are you allowing these things to happen? Mm-hmm. Can you show me how you want me to handle this? Can you give me your discernment? Am I being manipulated? Am I being lied to? Lord, who's telling the truth? I need you. Help me. Why? Mm-hmm. So after a year of that, I was like, okay, I need counseling. Yeah. And so I'd spent a year wrestling. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I had clarity on what I thought I needed to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and now I need counseling. And I went to counseling. And it was like the best counseling I've ever been in. And I've been in a lot. I love counseling. Mm -hmm. But that time was like, okay, I, I remember on the first day telling the therapist, I've been wrestling with God for a year on this. Wow. I think I know my role in this stuff with my family, but I need practical tools and I need someone who's biblically sound that I can bounce this stuff off of. Yeah. And it was just like a totally different type of counseling experience. Yeah. And it was awesome. It was just healthy. Yeah. And so again, it was a season of wrestling and learning mm-hmm. um, how to walk through things, mm-hmm. pressing into God. Wow. Not away. That's incredible that you had the, I mean, maybe you didn't, but I think probably what you did was that you knew, like, please hear me say, counseling is wonderful and great. Like, oh, if you, yes. If you have a great biblical counselor, please, yes, do it. But before that, like, before doing anything else, like, seek the Lord because in a time of, like, chaos and yes. ground-shaking, earth-rattling chaos, like, when everything, like you said, is just falling apart, like, the one thing, yeah. the one thing yes, that will right. never fall apart is the Lord. And you had just spent three years, like, like you said, sitting in his lap. And like the harder you beat against that chest, like the more firm you feel his presence, like never leaving you. Yeah, and that's no. exactly right. And he's just, there's nothing that can replace. And it that. just feels like you can walk through fire. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like with the stuff happening with my parents, I felt like I could walk through fire because I was pressing into the one thing that wasn't changing, the right. one source of truth, steadfastness, faithfulness, constant love, wisdom. I was making that really the source of everything mm-hmm. else yeah. because I've learned not to. I'd learned what it was like not to, and I learned how necessary it was to do that for me. Right. And about counseling, yes, yeah. I think everyone should go to counseling, mm-hmm. um, a good biblical counselor. Yeah. If you don't have a good biblical counselor, find one. Mm-hmm. They have been so important in my life 
just pointing me back to the Lord. But I think the difference in this last time and why I believe it it was so beneficial is because I spent time with God first. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I think this is what I'm learning from Him. Now let me take it to someone Mm -hmm. who can speak into it and help me like unravel it a bit more. Right. And boy, the things that I've learned and the ways that God has grown me. And I've learned things about God this in this past year that Mm -hmm. I didn't learn about him through my infertility. You know, it's like going back to that pie. Like Mm -hmm. it's not just because it's another hard season that it's the same old, same old with God. No, like there's always something more. Mm -hmm. He's going to reveal more of himself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, One of the things I think I told you this before, but like my very first impression of you, Christina, I heard you speak at a women's conference a lot of years ago. (laughs) I'm not, I'm super old now, but, um, Anyway, you were talking about something that I had, at the time I was like, I'm sorry, what did she just say? And I think the topic was like secrecy with the Lord yeah, or something like that. that. And I was like, when you were talking about it, I was like, no, 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 <laughs> no, there's no secrets. Like we need to like, yes, go to the Lord, but also like we need biblical like counsel. And we need like, I want my accountability group and my girlfriends. And yeah. and that is true. Yeah. And yes, there is, we we have to be in community and Obviously, we're on a podcast, so yeah. we want we want you to be encouraged by women who are around you. But you talked about this idea that like what happens in those moments between mm-hmm. you and the Lord, the intimacy that occurs when it is just you and the Lord is irreplaceable, yeah. and it has to be paramount to everything else because as much as I can say, oh, Christina, one day you'll thank the Lord for your infertility. Right. There's no, one no, could have, no. no one said a word to me that was comforting. Right. Yeah. And that's, and I, we want to comfort each other. And I think there's room for that, but the Lord is the source of that. And if you are not first comforted by the Lord exactly himself, right. mm-hmm. then I'm all, the best that I could be is a shadow. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to point you to a shadow. I want to point you to the Lord. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm grateful that the Lord showed me that. But I think that's this idea that like, be with the Lord, like run to Him because He is the one that's going to be there, mm-hmm. and He's the foundation. And then after that, bring other people. Bring in. some other yeah. people in because there is room. There has to be room for good biblical yes. advice, Absolutely. guidance. You know, and I think when I was speaking at that conference, Mm -hmm. what I had just come out of was, gosh, I don't remember how long ago it is, but it was a long time ago. Um, I had heard the Lord, not audibly, but I had felt like the Lord was telling me something. And I had gotten the advice and input from my mentors Mm -hmm. and other older, wiser, godly women around me. And they all echoed what I had felt Mm -hmm. like the Lord was saying. And so I started walking down this path, but then I invited everyone in on that path. Oh, yeah. And not everyone had things to say that were helpful. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, I got really confused because I thought I had heard something very clearly and the people in my life who the Lord had put to guide me had affirmed it. And then all of a sudden, people were saying, different things. Mm -hmm. And that's really when I learned, hey, sometimes things are not for the entire world. Yeah, Like sometimes things are just for me and the Lord. And then the few people that I need to just bounce it off of for affirmation or confirmation Mm -hmm. or, and sometimes those people will be like, ah, ah, alert, alert. Yes. I don't know that that's correct. Right. But just keeping those moments some of that stuff. It, it just doesn't have to be for the whole world. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I've even had, like, I've done the thing where I've gone to a friend before going yeah. to the Lord. And she, I this was like years ago. And to this day, I'm like, oh, thank you so much for doing this. But she was like, very gently, she was like, Camille, I I need to tell you oh. that what you just said is oh my not. Oh my <laughs> She's like, that's not really the true thing about the Lord. Wow. And I I really think it would benefit you to go to scripture and see mm. if that's a thing in scripture. And I was like, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? And then you And then I did. Yeah. And I was like, <gasps> oh Lord. like and I And I'd, those people change the course of my life. Yes. Like absolutely. they truly impact me mm-hmm. in ways that will I will carry forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and when we were talking earlier 
about this, you had said it's like the Job script flipped. Yes. You know, because in Job, what we see is all his friends and friends are great and wonderful. You should have godly friends. Yes. I'm not saying don't do that. Yeah. And then he goes to God. Yeah. But what would happen in our lives if we flip the script mm-hmm. and we go to God first and yes. then we go to our friends and we say, hey, I've been praying through this thing. Mm-hmm. I think this is what God's saying. Can you help me pray? And maybe he'll give you, you know, the same mm-hmm. things that he's given me. And if not, I know you love me enough to tell me yeah. no. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I love that. <gasps> and praise God. Praise God for those friends who are willing yes. to say the hard thing. And like, I pray that you and I would both be women who who do yeah. that for yeah. the women in our lives who are who are close with and us. And even today, like I will have some women come and ask me my thoughts on something or something really hard's going on. What do you think I should do? And I find myself saying, you should go pray about it first uh-huh. because I'm like, I don't want to be Job's friends. You know? I don't <laughs> either. I don't want to be a Job so friend. So like, you go pray about it. I'm going to go pray about it. And then let's come back and talk about it and we'll see what we come up with. Yep. But like, mm-hmm. go, I don't want to give you my thoughts without having any oh, yeah. discernment from the Lord. Oh, no, 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 no. I need that discernment. I'm not that wise. <laughs> Just um, saying. Okay. So in your mind, does wrestling with God always need to be in a moment of like mm. difficulty or a season of really struggling? Or is it something that can be done in like other seasons of your life? Yes. I think, I think when you think about wrestling, it's usually in a hard season, mm-hmm. right? But if there was a different word that could mean the same thing, but mm-hmm. be in good seasons too, yeah. I would say that word, but yeah. it's not coming to my mind right now. Yeah. But the idea that like we are taught somewhere, in, so I don't even know from where, a, what Christians should look like or how we should talk to God or what our, you know. Right. You can't be ungrateful or all these things. I wish we would talk more about like, you can actually be honest yeah. with the Lord mm-hmm. because He knows it anyway. Yeah. So in good and in bad, mm-hmm. just dig in to Him and ask Him to reveal Himself and He will. And then you become tethered to Him. And I find that even in the good seasons, mm-hmm. it's in the good seasons, it's harder, honestly, to be in the word, right? Yes. Because like, yeah. you're like oh, things are good. Right. I don't, whatever. But if I can in those seasons be as intentional, mm. then I get to see another different side of him. Yeah. Like, who is God in my joy and in my rejoicing and, you know, all in celebration? It doesn't just have to be in the grief right. and in the trial. Yeah. I think that's something that's hard. If you've walked through a season of grief or mm-hmm. difficulty, because you have that closeness with the, yeah, with the sure. Lord, if yeah. you've done that and gone to Him, that in those moments when it almost seems like, this is kind of too good to be true, and I don't really want to wrestle with you about totally. it because I You're don't like want waiting it to for go the shoe away. To drop. <laughs> yes, yes, waiting for the other shoe to drop yeah. is the exact thing. Yeah. Um, but, but the way I see those seasons is like you have to put in the time. Yes. Right. Like you're not going to be discerning mm-hmm. through your grief if you haven't spent time getting to know who the Lord is. And right. like if you haven't created those habits, you can't just all of a sudden when you hear bad news, right. be able to like have great wisdom and discernment and right. feel really close to God. No, you have to put in time, mm-hmm. you have to put in work so that when those waves come, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I know what to do. Right. I've, I have prayed up. I am scriptured up. I am quiet timed up. Like mm-hmm. I know exactly what my next step is. Right. It's going right back into yes. those things because mm-hmm. now I am going to start asking for those that guidance, right. that emotional help, that you know clarity of mind. Mm-hmm. Those things that sometimes we lose and oh, absolutely. Hard and I think that makes the times that come after that wrestling like you really enjoy the fruit more. Like yes, this idea. We were talking before. We started recording that Christina is the culinary expert in her home. <laughs> I am not in mine, but I've learned a couple of things, and one of them is that salt brings out yeah, the like flavor. Sometimes it gets added to cantaloupe, and that's not a thing I knew about beforehand. <laughs> but my husband's like, just try it because it makes the fruit sweeter. Right. And I'm like, how? Like it's the opposite of what it's that's supposed so to weird. be. Yeah. But that's the thing is that the salt makes the fruit sweeter. Yes. And if we like, if I were just to taste fruit without having the salt, yeah, I would so not good. know the depth of that flavor profile of that cantaloupe. Why am I talking about cantaloupe on this? I'm not a culinary I get expert. It. But that's the thing is the Lord is so much sweeter when we've gone through a hard time. And if we don't take the time to savor the fruit that comes from it, then what? 
Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Don't miss the fruit. That's- I mean, there are times in my days where like I'll hear something and I'll literally think, I have to get to my Bible and mm-hmm. my journal and my quiet time chair immediately I because I can't process this on my own mm-hmm. and I need to process it. Yeah. And so it's like, I got to get home. I got to get with the Lord and I have to ask Him His thoughts on this thing. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just, it's like what you're saying, you know, because of the hard seasons, mm-hmm. now I know yeah. how sweet things can be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is there a time when you've wrestled in a moment of good, like when things were profitable and like there was like a good thing mm-hmm. looming and yeah. you wanted to wrestle with the Lord about it? Um, I mean, I there was a situation where I was told something that I was told something was going to happen mm-hmm. and it would have an it could potentially have an impact on me. Yeah. And I immediately was like, "Oh, I got to call my my team of people. I have mm-hmm. got, you know, yep. this is one of those lapses where I forgot <laughs> to go to God first, but I was like, I have to call, I have to call all my like mentors mm-hmm. and ask them what they think about this thing. I have to talk to my husband about it, I have to talk to my friend about it." And God was like, "Hey, how about you talk to me about it?" <laughs> and I have not g- heard him audibly or anything, mm-hmm. but I remember thinking, I think God just told me to talk to him about it. Mm. And so I, the next morning, got in my quiet time chair, and I was like, okay, I heard this thing just happened, Yeah. Um, blah, blah, blah. And I just felt like he was saying, can you keep it between the two of us? Uh, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know really, if I can. I really you want know? to talk to my friends about it. And this was the situation that really taught me recently about mm-hmm. like, um, not in seasons of grief wrestling. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, Lord, I feel like this is a challenge. Mm-hmm. I will only talk to you about this. Oh my goodness. And it was like four or five, maybe even longer than that, weeks. Oh my goodness. Weeks. <gasps> Ooh, that's a long time. <laughs> where I just didn't feel like he was letting, like I, yeah. I felt like he was saying, no, come back to me, mm-hmm. come back to me, come back to me. And so I didn't share. And I just kept asking him, honestly, like I would ask a friend, yeah. what do you think about this thing? Mm-hmm. What do you think I should do? What if they say this? Then what yeah. should I do? But what if it plays out like this? And it's so interesting because he's the God of the universe. <laughs> like he already knows, yeah. you know, so it's not mm-hmm. like talking to my friend who's limited in right. her knowledge yeah. of what's about to happen. And so he didn't give me any like crazy epiphany. Right. But then when I was able to tell people, mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, God and I have it already figured out. Actually, mm-hmm. he has brought me to a place where I already know how I feel regardless of the outcome. Mm-hmm. And so then the outcome played out and I was like, oh, huh, I feel really good. Yeah. Like God prepared me. I love that. There was no other like noise, mm. right? It was yeah. like just me and the Lord. Mm. And it was really, really cool. That's it was so like, sweet. first of all, I was so proud of myself. Yeah. Like, I, like, I would go, be. Christina. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Yeah. I'm going to do that yeah. more often. And then just being like drawn even closer to him. And it's kind of like, oh, I have a secret with God. Mm-hmm. And it's yes. kind of like, special yeah because it like that's it is special it was special like was who wouldn't want to be that close mm-hmm. to the to the lord like that's such a and sweet... there were other people involved in the situation mm-hmm. and none of us we all knew each other was involved but none of us spoke to each other about it mm-hmm. we all i mean it, it was the lord he kind of just like communicated like you guys need mm-hmm. to just wrestle with me through these things and yeah. then afterwards when we all talked about it the Lord showed us all the same thing. I love that. We were all on the same page. And you're mm-hmm. like, what? Yeah. God, you're so cool. Amazing. <laughs> he does that. Like, when I think about, and I've said this, not in a flippant way, but just in a way that, like, I didn't know the depth of it, but, like, God desires unity among believers. Like, He desires mm-hmm. unity between, like, <laughs> friends and colleagues and spouses yeah, and, like, absolutely. family. Like, he and des- He provides it. Yes. Like, he provides it. Yes. He wants it. He desires it. He's yeah. going to cultivate it in the sure. lives of those who trust him because it's a demonstration of his character. Yes. Like he is a triune God, That's like right. unity. Mm-hmm. That's togetherness. Um, and I just, I love seeing that. You've talked about so many things that like when you were talking about Jacob wrestling with the Lord and how like God came in flesh mm. to like personally be with him and wrestle in that moment. And like he was physically changed and yeah. like his heart was changed. And it's such a picture of the gospel, like the coming Messiah who would be <laughs> physical on this earth and impact Jesus. us. 
physically and changing totally. our hearts. And I just, I love that God is consistent and he, you had said this before, so I'm totally stealing your words, but it's going to make me sound really wise when I say it, um, <laughs> but that he really, he desires that closeness with us and he wants to be he right there face to face. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like I think about Moses a lot and his relationship with God. Like Moses had the coolest relationship with God. Yes. Talked to him. God talked mm-hmm. back. He negotiates with him. Mm-hmm. He's like, he is so intimate with God. He knows him so well. He knows how far he can push. He knows what to say, when to say. He knows what the what God's going to respond like? Yeah. It's so cool to me that that's a relationship that's in Bible in the Bible, and I think it's in the Bible to be an example for us. Mm-hmm. That yeah. just because we might not hear God talk back like Moses did, He desires to be close to us, mm-hmm. and if we show up and do the work, He's like there waiting. Yeah, it's not even that He's gonna show up. It's like He's been he's there. Right he's there. like, oh, finally, thanks for arriving. Yeah, you know. Yeah, oh, and it is like. He like he really is like finally yet yeah, like yes. like I have so much to tell you. Yes. I feel like sometimes uh, like God's like finally what took you so long? Here are all the things I've been trying to tell you, mm-hmm. but you haven't asked me yet, or you haven't sat long enough mm-hmm. for me to explain them to you. Yep. Mm-hmm. This came at such a good time for me. I was thinking about this the other day um, that we when we had talked previously, you had mentioned that that picture of like climbing into the Lord's lap and just like banging your fist against his chest. And it was such a good picture for me because I found myself in that moment where I was like, I just, I just want to crawl up in the Lord's lap. And I had the picture in my head from our conversation and I was like, he's like, he's here right now. I'm, I'm ready to climb up in your lap. And I did. And it was just the sweetest (laughs) moment. And it wasn't like a begrudging thing. Yeah. When we first you first came to me and said, I want to talk about wrestling. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know nothing about wrestling, but sure, yeah. But it's not like a, okay, I got to get into this battle. It was more of like a, I'm I'm weary and ready and the Lord is good. Yeah. And this is what I need. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think of this um, quote by Spurgeon. Mm-hmm. And I heard it like a year ago or so, and then it like came back to my mind. I think the Lord just brought it to my mind. It says, I've learned to kiss the wave that slams me into the rock of ages. Mm. And every time I think about it, I think, man, if that is not true of my life and the past several years, these things have happened that have slammed me yeah. into the rock of ages. And I keep saying, you know, God of the universe, but in my mind, when I think of the God of the universe, like this deity who created everything, runs everything, everything hangs on his word, is sustained, like he sustains all, all everything. Yeah. He wants to be close to me. Mm-hmm. And these things happen in my life that just slam me into him. Mm-hmm. But I could go the other way. Yeah. Right. We have choices. Mm -hmm. I have a choice to be like, this hard thing is happening, like I did at the beginning of my infertility, and not dig into the rock of ages. Yeah. Or we can say, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm digging in. Yeah. And I think about these waves that come, and all of our waves are different. Yeah. I know there are people listening to this who have experienced much greater suffering than I have. Yeah. Um, and probably longer seasons of suffering than I have. Mm-hmm. And there might be people listening who have not walked through significant grief and yeah. trials yet, but we all will. Mm-hmm. And all of us have a choice. We can either not push in mm-hmm. or we can push in yeah. and choose to wrestle mm-hmm. with the rock of ages, with the God of the universe yeah. who's waiting mm-hmm. for us. Yeah. And we know it will like, we will be victorious because he's victorious. Yeah. yeah. There's not a matter of like, okay, here's a secret, listeners. You need to know that Christina picked wrestling because she also was a huge, <laughs> grew up as a huge fan of wrestling. In case you didn't know, she's a huge fan of WWE. Yeah, I used to like sneak watch it on Friday nights because my parents wouldn't really let me. That's hilarious to and me. And I love Triple H. <laughs> And when he married Stephanie McMahon, I thought it was the cutest love story. Oh, my goodness. And I guarantee nobody listening to this has any clue what I'm talking about. There's probably like one or two, maybe. If you know what we're talking about, please message me. (laughs) (laughs) 
I also met Sting the wrestler once and it was really cool. What? <laughs> he became a believer and he was what? talking at this conference, Acquire the Fire. Does anyone know what that is? I know what that is. Acquire the yeah, Fire. Yeah, yeah. He was at Acquire the Fire yeah. one year. It was really cool. That's hilarious. It was that that's when I peaked, really. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a joke. That's hilarious. That a joke. <laughs> um but yeah, I don't like obviously my perception of wrestling is probably not full i know a very (laughs) little little bit of wrestling um but like we don't have to come into wrestling with this idea that like one of us is not coming out of this ring like when we're wrestling with the lord like it is for our benefit Mm -hmm. like it is it's he has a blessing in it for us yeah absolutely um christina i'm so i'm just so encouraged by you i love i love what the lord has done in your life and i love that you're willing to share it because yeah, I, I mean, have told him over and over during the hard things, mm-hmm. if you don't use this, there is no point. Mm-hmm. Like, use this to shape me. Use it to help others. Use it to show people how much you love them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and it is like you, God is glorified when His character mm-hmm. is known and proclaimed. And mm-hmm. I know that that is your prayer that women would know the Lord and intimately. Yes, personal. yeah. Um, and if you have questions about what that looks like, please yeah. message us because yeah. we would love to talk with you more about it. Um, well, I'm so grateful for Thanks you coming for today me. and talking about wrestling. Um, and I'm going to praise the Lord um, for His work and um, ask Him to bless our words. Awesome. Lord, um, you are um, incredible to us. Um, we love that you desire to be known by us. And we love and are so humbled and um, worshipful of you because you know us better than we know ourselves. Um, I ask that our words today would um, encourage women um, to seek you first um, and to know you intimately because you are the very best for us and you desire good things for us. Um, Help us to wrestle with you um, in a way that honors you and help us to really dig into your word, um, which provides us with hope and steadfastness and truth and wisdom and goodness. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. For more episodes, be sure to follow Encouraged and Equipped.